Hi and welcome. In this video we are going to make rails using Blender's simulation nodes. Now before we begin, I have to say that there are already a couple of ways to get Trail presets, highly customizable ones. And if you're after something like that, like a pre-made preset, I recommend you check out Dylan Goo Studios Trail add-on, which is awesome and generally has more control right away. I'll add a link in the description. But if you're still here, that probably means that you want to learn how to make something like this yourself, which I can always appreciate. So let's get into it. What we're gonna do first is add a plane and make sure merge by distance, I mean merge at center and E to extrude and Z and hold control to like incremental move it out like this. Uh, we we, we want to make sure that we have like uh, a point where the trail is going to come from. And let's, this isn't necessary, but I'm gonna subdivide it a couple times like this. Tab out. What you want to do to see if it's working is you just want to animate it for a bit. Now this doesn't have to be fancy. What I just did is basically just turn this on, start playing and move it around like this. Boom. And now you have recorded that motion. And if you wanna go fancy, you can add some rotation, but that isn't really necessary. So I'm not gonna do that right here. So what we can do now is go into geometry nodes and add another object. And this object is going to be the actual, uh, oh no. I, 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 I wanna have another plane. And this is gonna be the actual geometry nodes object that is gonna be the actual trail. So uh, let's start. We're gonna add some geometry nodes here. And we don't really need this group input for the geometry right here. We, we're gonna leave this plane to be dead. <laughs> okay, so we got this connection and we're gonna add an object info right here. And you might have already guessed it. We're gonna uh, grab our plane as the object in here. Now what we're gonna do is grab the velocity, this stripe, this line is moving at. I'll just show you what I mean. For this, we're gonna need a simulation zone. Let's put this one aside for now. And we're gonna put this in there, got this and put this in there. Now we're gonna add a sample index, add a position node, add an index node, and set the sample index float to vector. This in there, that in there. Just to clarify, you don't really need to understand this right now because hopefully it will become more simple later on. Yeah, anyway, we're gonna add a math, vector math, right here and set this to subtract. Put this in there, and put this in there. Now we're gonna capture attributes from this all the way over there and that over there. And I'll plug this in there. So basically what this is, right? If we uh, go into this view, it's this, this location right here, what we're capturing. So the motherfucker is here and we're capturing this position in this state. So we can basically extrude this and set the extrusion to be over here because we have captured this and that is this so that we can make well, this happen. Yeah. So to make that more clear, I'm gonna add an extrude mesh, plug this in there, set this to edges. Now we're gonna do nothing with this yet because we wanna add a set position first and plug this in there and then plug this in there. Now, if we let it run for a bit, it does nothing because we don't have it plugged in. Okay, reset our animation. It's, oh my God, we have to set this to relative. <laughs> and here we go. It kind of does something, but, uh. Not exactly the right thing. And that's because we have set this offset to one. We don't need that to be set to one. And that's not it either. Because we only need to set the top to be that. Yeah. <laughs> okay, there we go. <laughs> okay. As you can see, this is the first step of uh, what we're trying to achieve. But we want to be able to make this trail longer. So how are we going to do that? We are basically gonna add another one of these or another one of these zones, the simulation zones right here. And we're basically gonna make uh, like the previous versions of this square that we have right here. Uh, we're gonna save this one and this one and add it up so that we can have multiple of these at the same time. Let me show you what I mean by that. We're gonna add a simulation zone add a join geometry in here, and then this in there, and this in there. Now, as you can see, ooh, a sick, a very good. <laughs> it basically does what we want to do, but we want to delete the earlier version. So this one is like three old or four old 
four frames old at this point. Uh, let's say we don't want that. We want our thing to die at like four frames old. So what we can do for that is we have to add a, an attribute or basically a value that tells you how old this plane right here is. So, so this right here and this one and this one and so on. So what we're gonna do for that is first, we have to convert this geometry to geometry to instance so that we get that age value for the entire section right here and not just one face or one vertex or one edge. Then we wanna add a store named attribute right here and a delete geometry right here. And in this store named attribute, we're gonna plug a named attribute, which is gonna be our age so basically the age again of this plane we're gonna plug this in there also make sure to name this age so that this simulation knows ah oh, this is age and this has age and this has age age <laughs> and now to make sure that uh, we keep adding age we're gonna add a math node because again, what happens in this simulation zone is basically it repeats exactly what it says it's supposed to do within this zone. So the basics of why this is currently creating this trail right here is because it keeps joining uh, this geometry right here. And it does that over and over and over again. If we have this age attribute and we add one, it's gonna keep adding one to this age, but only for this trail that we made. Now, right now it's not gonna do anything. Even better, it's gonna delete everything because we have this delete geometry right here. Uh, we wanna tell this delete geometry what to delete. And that's gonna be anything above the number we set it to. And that's how we do that is by getting another math node and setting this to greater than. And we plug this attribute in here. So basically we're gonna say when the age is higher than let's say four, then in that case you can delete oh you can delete uh, the trail so as you can see that gives us this result right here which is basically the, en the entire thing so you can change this however you want so, so let's set this to six and now it's gonna become longer and if we set this to two it's gonna become oh it's gonna become way shorter let's set this to five for now so that we can easily spot our mistakes and one of the mistakes right here is as you can see these planes are separate and what we typically want to do for, oh, that's the wrong button. What we typically want to do for trails like these is we want to subdivide it because we can only capture like data every every frame and not every subframe, which sucks because that gives us these these low polygon these lo low poly lines uh, or trails, which you could like subdivide. Oh, I mean subdivide. And then surface, uh, but currently that's not possible because all of each of these planes are individual ones. And how we're going to solve that is by first realizing these instances, because again, this is an instance and not real geometry. And then we're going to merge by distance. Boom. Now, currently, uh, we don't want all of this to be subdivided. For example, we don't want uh, the front to be subdivided. The end doesn't really matter because if you're going to make a trail, it's typically that it's typical that you fade out the end. So you don't see, really see the end anyway. So this being round doesn't really matter. But the beginning does matter because we don't want like if you have a sharp sword, you don't want this rounding to be there. So how we do that is we grab our named attribute. Let's duplicate this for clarity and we add a math node that is set to less than so basically we're gonna say if you are like a very low value of age if you're very low of age which which will be uh, like the newly spawned square after the sword or the the line here in that case we're gonna set the edge crease to very high which basically means if you increase this edge crease you can see it becomes sharper so how we can do that is to plug this in there and this in there and now we can slowly increase this as you can see let's grab our sweet spot i think this is it this is uh linear by the way so uh, as, uh, it doesn't really matter how far you set this greater value then or like how long you make the trail this value uh is consistent i don't really know why if someone can explain to me why <laughs> that would be good but like right now we have a very nice sharp beginning and then the rest is nice and round and then 
in here you can increase these subdivisions like this. How cool is that? Now this is basically the functional mesh section of this tutorial. Now we're gonna make the shading part of it, which means we'll also have to create our own UV map. Because if we go into shading mode right now, and uh, okay, wait, so let's set, let's add a set material here, and let's add a new material for us. That's the material here. There we go. If we go into shader editor now, and scroll out a bit, as you can see, if we grab a UV map now, it's gonna give us nothing because this is a procedurally created mesh. And we want to have a nice gradient in here, which you typically get from a UV map. Now, luckily there are more ways than just going into edit mode and UV unwrapping this to get a UV map. We are just going to create our own by storing some of these geometry nodes attributes that we made or just one and then we're going to create another in a minute this age right here is basically a gradient from very low to very high this age right here is five and the age right here is zero and you can see that back if you go into shader editor uh, if you grab an attribute uh, we basically stored our age in here so we can preview this now by uh, pressing ctrl shift click on this if you have your node wrangler turned on uh, we can basically go into um, we can add a map range node plug this in there and if we drag this value up you can see that we have a nice gradient here and this gradient stays consistent with the the line going forward so that's all good uh but it's a very high value and that value can change depending on how long this trail is uh so we want to store the length of that trail as well so basically how long we're gonna make the trail before we delete it which is convenient because we have that right here. This value is what we need to plug in to this value right here to create a consistent gradient. But before we do that, let's just grab another node input or group input and plug this in there. Now grab uh, this and uh, set this to integer so that we have a nice rounded value. As you can see, we can now control our length, uh, the length of our trail right here which is very nice. And while we're at that, uh, you can probably also just uh, add these subdivision levels in here like that. And uh, to make it easy, we're gonna also put this plane in here so that we can always change this trail to be something else. Let's set this value to trail length, this level to subdivision, and this object uh, can just stay object. Okay, now, we, now you can see we have our trail length set to 10, but we also want to store that value in here so that we can put it in our shader node. So store named attribute in there and plug this in there and name that trail length. And then you can copy this by hovering over it and control C, go into shader editor, scroll out and go here, uh, duplicate this attribute Control V there, and now plug this value in there. Now we have a consistent gradient, as you can see, that follows the entire trail. Wow. Now this is all good if you just want to have this, for example, like in an alpha right here, right here. And if you want to invert this like that, we can now preview this. Okay, that's, that's disgusting. We're gonna set, oh, oh, we're gonna set this, uh, Press to Eevee and then go in here, set this render method to blended. There we go. Uh, this is good if you just want to trail like this. But what we want to do is also add like maybe a noise modifier to this. Um, and currently we can't do that because we don't have enough gradients for that. So we have this gradient, right? Uh, this is good. But we also need a Y gradient. So that's, go that's going this direction. Wow, beautiful arrow. And how we do that is basically by counting the amount of vertices we have uh, in here, in, the, in this plane thing we made earlier. Um, so basically we wanna number each of these vertexes, give each of these vertexes a number uh, that goes higher and higher and higher. So basically this is vertex zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Um, we wanna make sure that all these vertexes are named in that order to get a good gradient like this. So like this is one and this is eight and the gradient between that is two, three, four, five, six, seven, etc. And how we do that is by grabbing 
the indexes of those vertices because we already have those numbers that we're talking about, like those one, zero, one, eight, <laughs> zero, one, two, three, four, five, etc. The Those are already stored in here. So if we grab a store named attribute and grab an index right here, it's going to store the index or like basically the value of each point. So each vertex right here. And uh, if we name this, like uh, let's conveniently name this UVY and go back into shading mode, duplicate one of these attributes and set this also to UVY and, do, and preview this now. It's going to give us nothing. <laughs> uh, that's because we need to make sure that they really exist. Wait, hold on. We can do that by doing mesh to curve. Oh, mesh to curve. Mesh to curve. No. Mesh to curve. Boom. And then curve to mesh. Boom. It still doesn't do anything. Oh, that's because we need to play it. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> okay. So now we have this value and it's gonna keep staying consistent because we have this mesh to curve and curve to mesh. That's basically gonna give our plane uh, a stable ID from zero to one, two, three, two, four. Wait, zero to one, two, two, to three, to four. To, uh, okay. That does mean that this uh, zero is going all the way up to eight, which uh, might be a problem. Might not be, but I don't really know how to like change this that it's so ext such an extreme gradient So we're just gonna not worry about that <laughs> Yeah, so we go back into shader mode shader editor now as you can see we have these two Consistent gradients and we can bind we can combine both of those So combine XYZ into XYZ set this to X and this to Y and now a boom we have a, a, a uv map but as you can see it's not a regular looking uv map because this is very bright and that's what i was talking about this y value gets very big especially if you have like this plane or any mesh that you're adapting to if it has more than eight vertices it is gonna get very bright or like more than two vertices it's gonna get very bright so you basically want to add another map range in here and uh set this in our case to eight because we counted eight vertices in in this uh in this plane right here but you'll just have to adjust this to whatever works best for you. Okay, I'm gonna move this out the way. And now as you can see, if we plug a noise texture in here, it's gonna give us just very good results, especially if we have like a relatively shorter, shorter line. So if we uh, just go in here and set this trail length to be three, as you can see, it gives us a very nice results right here. But this is now just really open to your interpretation, uh, whatever you wanna do with it. Uh, if you want to have a nice preset for what you can do, uh, I would like add an emission right here, which we're going to add on top of a transparency, which we'll do by adding an add shader like this and then like that. And then we can grab this gradient and add a mix node, mix color node set to color burn for which we'll add this gradient in here and then this noise texture. Then we'll add a mapping node in here set this value all the way to one and as you can see we now have this and we can control this like that and if you want to make the trail a bit longer you can also add a math node to do, do it like that and now you can add this into the emission strength and there we go we have a trail now like that wow but you can really just uh, do whatever you want to this you can make up your own uh, node setup here. I'll leave that up to your interpretation. Now, because we made this entire setup this way, it also means that we can apply this to like basically any object. So if we add a monkey right here, a monkey, Suzanne, we can parent this to like, just to get some animation, we're gonna parent this to the plane right here. Control P, keep transform. You can either duplicate this object we made right here. Let's name it trail by the way, to not be confused by these namings. We can duplicate this and set this object to Suzanne. And now you can see we have this cool, cool sort of like motion blur effect, pretty sick. But how you would typically use it is, uh, let's turn this off for now. Oh, I guess not. Oh yeah, okay. How you would typically use it is you grab a couple of these vertexes and we draw a line by pressing control and then this. Oh, it's not, I don't want to do it like that. I want to grab it like this. So press control while you have one vertex selected and this, 
or or this and then this and then this and then this and then this finally you can oh and then also this one you can shift d to duplicate it right mouse click to not transform it press p to separate it and now we have suzanne 2 like this line make sure that it's parented to this suzanne if you're doing this with an animated mesh like a rig uh, you don't really have to do anything at this moment you don't really have to parent it to a moving thing or anything because it already has the armature modifier applied to it you can now set this trail to be the zuzan 0.001 and as you can see we now have a cool trail okay let's hide this for a bit and this and you can apply this to any shape which is really cool let's make this trail like 10 Wow, how sick is that? Wowie. Now again, because this is like, uh, these, are, these are more vertices than eight. So you probably have to increase this to get like a better result. As you can see, <laughs> we kind of wanted to span across the entire thing and not just, uh, yeah. You can also turn off this clamp to make sure that like you don't get that cutting off thingy. But yeah, that's basically been it. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something and I hope to see you again. Bye-bye.